Hey guys, Tom here and welcome back to another vlog. I wasn't really planning on doing another vlog for a while, but here we are in the parking lot of my school, about to drive all the way to Habibi Motorsport because we're having a, uh, a slight issue, hopefully a simple issue with the car. A couple nights ago when I was driving, wasn't even driving it that hard, uh, something popped off, it felt like something popped out of its seal or came loose or whatever and um, the car started making no power basically no boost we weren't making any positive boost according to the built-in boost gauge or the um, Cobb access port boost gauge and there's now a weir weird kind of whirring sound that I assume is the turbo spinning while not accomplishing anything um, because pr most likely there's an issue with either the gritty type s blow off valve coming loose or maybe intercooler piping or something like that is most likely the Grady Type S because that's not actually technically supposed to be compatible with this car and that part has required the most experimentation so yeah that's a thing but it should be a simple fix hopefully we, we can get it fixed um, very easily um, so we're gonna be heading over to Habibi Motorsport I'll start it up to show you like what I mean like no boost is made you can't hear the intake the blow off valve doesn't do anything um, I don't know if I can do it while idling, but I can try. It's very weird because it makes like no power. I mean, when I start it up, it still idles at 2000 RPM. So that hasn't changed. All right, stop it. So here's the boost gauge that just comes with the car. And here is the Cobb access port. Boost is right here. So, hopefully you guys can see that. When I rev it, nothing happens. It doesn't go past, um, doesn't go past zero. And if I open the door, you'll be able to hear it better. The exhaust sounds great, but there's the weird whirring noise and that's worrying. <laughs> So we're gonna be taking it over to Habibi Motorsport to have it looked at. I've got all my school stuff. I've got all my school stuff with me, so uh, while they're working on it, I can just work on classes and editing and stuff. Um, just as a random thing to kind of celebrate, we hit a million views on the how to get too fast to furious skyline sound. That's really cool. Uh, my first video with a million views ever. Um, it's no surprise that that's a video that would do it first, but. Um, Still very, very, very cool. And um, we'll see which video is next to do that. Probably it's going to be the guide on how to build the M3 GTR, which is coming. I'm gonna be working with Herschel Brewer at Scottsdale Motorsport to figure that out. Cause he is, he is the BMW man. And uh, he knows his stuff, he's got his connections and he's a cool guy. So he actually helped with the M8 to GTE video. I should have really credited him, um, but I didn't but he will definitely be getting some credit for the M3 GTR video that hopefully we can work on. And um, he's, he's a very cool guy and a supporter of the channel and hopes that we can go even further than we are now and what I even have in mind, maybe becoming the next Top Gear, who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's head over to Habibi, Habibi, let's head over to Habibi Motorsport and uh, get the poor car fixed. Just gonna quickly give you guys an idea of what the bad whirring sound sounds like. Let's get out of the parking area. Oh, that sounds terrible. Let's see if we can hear it just in first. Ugh. Can you guys hear that? It sounds nasty. Let's see if you can hear it if, even more if I close the window. Ugh, sounds like a drill. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be babying this poor car all the way down to Maryland Heights because I don't want to cause any issues and I elected to not tow the car. So I'm driving it the whole way there. Go on, tractor. Oh, that's a cop. I'm gonna put my phone down. <laughs> or not phone, camera. Hello, officer. I'm not doing anything outrageously illegal. Is there, are there laws against holding cameras while filming? It's not technically a phone. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> For anyone that asks, to, to, to those that it concerns, um, my camera is using a magical floating mount 
that magically moves around when I need it to. <laughs> Definitely not holding it with my hand. Oh, it's, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, hopefully it'll be an easy fix so that we can get it back to making full power again, full boost, and making awesome Brian O'Connor gritty type S blow off valve noises. I don't really want to spend a whole bunch of money on repairs. I've already had to replace the clutch and master cylinder in this car before. Sorry if I wasn't pointing the camera at me. Um, I've got about eight or $9,000 worth of modifications left to do on this car. Um, those include body kit, wrap, wheels, and wing. Not, not too, too bad. Um, nothing that will break the car as well, which is nice. Um, we don't need any more of that. So, and once we finish with the WRX, we can totally set our sights with no trepidation, hesitation, or hindrance of any kind, we can set our sights on the M3E46. That is, as promised, the next car we are going to be doing. And I'm thinking, I've, I've got several ideas on how to execute that project, because it, it is a project that requires a higher budget, is much more complicated, and will take more time and all sorts of stuff, so I need to figure out how to fund it. I need to figure out who to work with, what I'm gonna do with it, how I'm gonna film it, how I'm gonna try and get it to pay for itself a little bit. Um, Cause money is a very big concern cause we're talking about a few hundred thousand dollars worth of car stuff. And I have some ideas that could potentially help negate a lot of the costs without having to cut any corners and it could be even more fun for you guys to enjoy entertainment wise. So keep an eye out for that, but depending on both timing and funding, that will determine when it all goes down. If, if I can get the funding, then I'm sure I can work around scheduling, um, and then the car can be built. And the sooner the car can be built, the sooner we can tackle other projects as well, because I know a lot of you are like, are thinking, well, I might be an M3 GTR fan, but I'm more of a Nissan Skyline guy myself, and I want to see what Tom can do with a Skyline. And it's like, well, so do I, but that's also very, very expensive because Skylines can hit you as hard as a, a used Lamborghini, so you got to be aware of that. I'm also not going the speed limit. I'm a little afraid to because I don't really want to cause actual damage to the car. Like, I don't want to break the turbo. I don't want to damage the engine. I want this to be simple and easy to fix. If it ever becomes not that, oh, I'm gonna to have to speed up. There's a semi behind me. I don't want to. We're going 60 in a 65. I'm usually going about 70 in these sort of areas. At least we're getting to enjoy a nice drive. If it weren't for the really, really horrible whirring noises of my engine it, it would be it would be fine oh christ on a bike i have to change lanes i don't want to speed up i really really don't want to speed up but y'all are forcing me to i don't mind slowing down i am a fan of going slow i'm really not but today i am and so is my car just sounds so horrible. They're open until seven, so hopefully they can figure something out before they close. Otherwise, I'm gonna awkwardly have to find a ride home, which, uh, yeah, will not be fun. But yeah, hopefully we can get this fixed and not put a dent in the M3 E46 funding. All right, see you guys in the next clip. Okay, so you guys probably wanna know how that went down. Um, it's the next day and the car is not here. I can even show you by going downstairs. It's empty, nothing. So the issue with the WRX was more serious than I thought it was gonna be. It, the, um, well, let's put it this way. The blow off valve was perfectly fine, still perfectly secure. Nothing, nothing with that happened, nothing wrong with the exhaust, nothing wrong with the intake or intercooler piping. The turbo is smoked though. The turbo is ruined, like completely ruined. 
I can't yet tell you what caused the turbo to break, but essentially it's all shredded on the inside. Uh, like the actual fan and a few other things are all, all screwed up. Not sure why or how, so that has to get fixed. But obviously, beyond getting that fixed, we have to confirm what caused the turbo to just break because I am not willing to believe that the factory turbo in the WRX just decided to break for no reason. So we also have to find the cause and make sure it doesn't happen again because I don't want to waste money just replacing the turbo. But yeah, the car is broken. I'll kind of I'll kind of reenact what it was like going into Habibi Motorsport and, and like how it went down. So it's like, it's like, all right, hey man, I called about uh, some issues I was having with the car. Keys are in the car outside. You can bring it in and just have a look. We had an issue where there was a popping noise and the car stopped making a ton of power, wasn't making any boost. It was making a weird whirring kind of power drill noise inside the engine. Didn't sound very good. Uh, can you just have a look? We were thinking maybe it was intercooler piping or the blow off valve or whatever. All right, sure, I'll take a look. All right, and then I, so I sit down, I get out my laptop and I start editing videos and then eventually working on school stuff. He comes over and says, so your turbo smoked. And I go, because that hadn't even, because that hadn't even crossed my mind um, that the turbo could have been broken. And we're, again, we're not 100% sure why or how. I, can, I couldn't even fully understand what was broken on the turbo. I can't quite remember just, spe just specifically what he told me. And um, it could be something to do with a seal breaking with that's related to oil or something because there was some oil and it was all burnt and stuff. Yeah, just not, not fun. The turbo being broken, it's an annoying setback because I think, I think a factory Subaru turbo is about $750. I, I, this, this is a, to some, this might be an opportunity to upgrade the turbo in the skies, but I, I, I'm not really in the mood to do that. I don't really want to spend any more extra money than I already would have to on this car because I wasn't, it wasn't part of the plan to increase the power or any of the hardware related to the turbo because all I really wanted to do was a few aesthetic things and then be done with the car for a while and keep it as a reliable daily. Problem with that is that when something breaks on the daily, you expect it to be the modifications, not the factory stuff. So I don't know what caused this. And that's what we have to figure out. Because otherwise, how is this a daily? Because the daily is meant to work and be reliable. But again, you know, this is the, this is part of owning a sports car. It's part of the responsibility. When stuff breaks, it's more expensive than normal. But I just, I, I, I'm very curious about what the explanation is for why the turbo died seemingly for no reason. Because I wasn't driving hard when it happened. Um, and it, as far as we know, nothing indicates that it had anything to do with any of the modifications I've done to the car. You know, because the car wasn't running really really hard it wasn't being driven hard the engine shouldn't be working hard because the boost you know like it's not tuned all that aggressively either it's making it's making maybe 305 310 horsepower at the most if i'm lucky so yeah that's really weird really 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 weird but yeah so uh WRX is down gonna have to order parts and figure out how to prevent this from happening figure out what happened with the whole oil situation? I'm sure that's not going to be simple. Um, I hope it is, but I, I'm no longer going to make the assumption that anything on this car is going to be simple, even though it's all to do with factory stuff. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for a million views on the Nissan Skyline GTR video. And um, let's pray that the WRX can be fixed and that it remains sustainable. It's borderline not. So, yeah. Because if it keeps breaking for no reason, um, that could be a real issue in terms of how long I can keep it, which is very annoying because as you know, college student, college student budget, I'm very lucky to have this car, but having something like this break out of nowhere kind of brings things down to the wire financially. So we'll see. I am going to fix it regardless of whether I keep it or not, because I'm not going to sell a broken car to someone. That would be kind of, that'd be kind of dumb, don't you think? So yeah. I'll keep you guys updated when I can, but I guess no more WRX videos for a while. However, I will continue to do more vlogs and things like that when I can, when I go to shows and car reviews. I've been, there is a silver lining to this. This has convinced me to go out and message a bunch of people 
to do car reviews in person, and I've got a few neat cars that I've actually confirmed. One of them being the car I actually want to buy, an M3 E46. So keep an eye out for an M3 E46 review because that will be happening, that will be cool. He's doing all sorts of neat stuff with the car, and he's a college student. Well, specifically in his words, a struggling co college student. But aren't we all? <laughs> I think that's just another word for college student. In fact, I would say college student is just an abbreviation of the full term struggling college student. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys are looking forward to everything I've been doing. Hope you guys are enjoying the Need for Speed Heat videos because I'm having a lot of fun doing those and they seem to be helping the channel quite a bit. They're, they, you know, in terms of gaming videos, they're doing much better than how I would normally expect them to be because they're getting a few thousand views each, which is, um, I'm not going to complain. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video and are new, comment about how you feel and also what you had to eat today. Uh, if you like the video, obviously hit the like button because that's there's no confusion there. And of course, if you are a cool person, you can even subscribe after you've had a peruse through the channel. And, assuming you've been around for a while and just want to support the channel and do the extra mile sort of thing, you can head over to my Patreon, where you can help fund travel, uh, filming equipment, so I can get a camera that has better stabilization so that this doesn't happen all the time. The next thing we need is like a camera with um, a built-in mic, um, and is a little bit bigger and a le little bit less shaky. And then, of course, the funds would also be going into either the, the, the WRX or any other future upcoming car projects. So yeah, if you want to do that, check out the Patreon. But that's enough for me. This video isn't meant to be a big, big thing, just kind of an update on the car, because I made a post about the WRX being down on the community section of the channel, and I thought I'd explain it in video form instead, because yeah. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching again for the second or third time, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy and keep it crazy. See ya.